Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Easy Ag, the number one podcast to help you farm differently. Today is Thursday and not Tuesday, in case you've lost track of time while you were harvesting your wheat. Starting today, we're going to release our podcast every week on Thursday morning instead of Tuesday morning. Today, I want to step back in time a couple weeks. Uh, one of the things I talked about last time was corn rootworm. And unfortunately, I had the experience this week with a customer to be able to go to the field and take a look at some corn rootworm damage. Uh, and so I wanted to talk about that uh, one more time. And then I also wanna talk about some other things you might be seeing in the field. So um, I'll pick up uh, a root mass here that I pulled out of this field. And as you guys can see, this is a, an underdeveloped root mass, or actually it's a root mass that's been severely damaged by corn rootworm. And so these roots right in here that are all brown and gnawed off, I kind of talked about that a couple weeks ago, those will not regrow. So right now what we're looking for is we're looking for this next node of roots to come out and to start developing laterals and root hairs and to feed that corn. And the bad news about this is this plant was pretty severely damaged. The good news is most of the plants in the field are still exhibiting this type of root mass. And so you can see like this root right here was damaged and the end of it was killed off by corn rootworm. Um, but there's a lot of healthy roots growing and there's a lot more fine root hairs. Most of the field had uh, one to three rootworm larvae per plant. And the other good news is some of those larvae are already pupating. And so that uh, is going to lessen the pressure or lessen the amount of feeding that we're seeing on that root mass and allow those plants to go ahead and redevelop. So in that field right now, this is the um, uppermost leaf collar on that corn. And so let's uh, split this stock real quick and stage out where this corn is on growth. So we can talk about what's going on within the plant. Okay, so we got our stock split out here and we can go back and we can count nodes one, two, and three. Here's the fourth node, fifth, sixth, seventh, and this last leaf sheath um, and leaf collar comes down to the eighth node. And so one of the things that's happening in this field right now is the maximum number of kernel rows um, on, on the ear has just been uh, determined and we're moving into the time period where we're starting to uh, develop the maximum number of kernels in length on that ear. So clear, you can see, if you look real close, Right there, we have the tassel uh, already developed in there. And we're probably getting very close to determining which one of the ear nodes, every node has the ability to put on an ear. So if you look real close, there's an earbud. Around here, there's little dots. Those are root buds and a leaf. And so every node has the ability to produce a root, a leaf, or an ear. And when you reach about B10, the, the plant is determining which one of those ears is going to be the primary ear. And so uh, we've got the tassel showing up in the crop now. We're at V8. We're determining, we have basically determined the maximum number, number of kernel rows, and we're moving on to determining the maximum number of kernels in length for that ear. So uh, not the greatest time to have uh, this much or this uh, significant of root damage on your crop. You can see this uh, plant at gooseneck because of that. It's trying to sink these roots into the soil and, and brace itself up so that it can grow upright still. Um, and so it's probably taking a little bit away from uh, the plant in um, regards to what it would be putting into developing that largest ear. Uh, in order to just kind of keep itself going. But we have seen, uh, like I said in the past, corn rootworm damage, um, it varies. Sometimes severe damage like this causes a major yield drag. Other times, if we have the right growing conditions, we can kind of make up for that with water and fertilizer and things like that through the season. So, another thing you might be seeing out in the field, and this doesn't show up very good on the video, but 
uh, if I hold both of these plants up, maybe you can see the one in my left hand here is a little lighter in color and uh, looks kind of wrinkled. And so when you got leaves that are wrinkled like this and light colored, often you can see them from the road. What's happening here is this corn is going through rapid growth and the whirl is really tight and it's having trouble unfurl, uh, unfurling itself. And so what happens is one of those leaves or two, multiple of those leaves get kind of caught up in that whirl and they're still growing and growing and growing, but they're not turning dark green because they can't see the sunlight yet. And then they pop out. And when they pop out, you get these lightly colored leaves and you get kind of this uh, wrinkled effect on the edges of the leaves from that. They call that rapid growth syndrome. Uh, there's no known yield loss to that. It generally happens to the corn between uh, V5 and V8, but it can happen as late as V12. Um, and you'll just kind of see a speckling of your field as you drive by sometimes on that rapid growth syndrome. Another thing we're seeing, and you might've seen this when I held it up, but uh, tillering. And so there's always the debate, um, is tillering in your corn a good thing or a bad thing? Well, that's uh, a little bit unknown. Right now, in some of these fields, something that the tillering is helping with is it's helping shade the ground from the uh, extremely hot uh, weather that we're having. And so you could say that's a good thing. Another thing it does by shading the ground is help suppress weeds uh, or weed development in your field. So you could say that's also a good thing. Other people would say these tillers are robbing nutrients and water from the main stock and it's gonna result in lower yield. I'm 50-50. Um, it seems some hybrids, just like the rapid growth syndrome, some hybrids tiller more than others. Uh, sometimes you see tillers on a single plant and not on others in the field. And often that's due to um, in row spacing on the corn. So it's just a few things you might be seeing in the field uh, this week as you finish up wheat harvest and get back out there. Um, up here on the blackboard, I did wanna make uh, one last quick comment about uh, corn rootworm. So uh, corn rootworm is something that we have to kind of manage year round. So we're managing it at planting with the trait stack that we're putting in the ground. Um, in our seed corn, we may be managing it at planting also with an insecticide we're using in our starter fertilizer. Um, we need to monitor it in the corn at this stage to see if we're having problems with um, feeding of those rootworm larvae on the, um, on the roots of the corn. And if we are having significant feeding, then we need to make sure we monitor and possibly treat that field um, at tassel timing. And so what can happen there is those rootworm be beetles, if they're at a higher enough level in your field, can clip the silks off and make your corn not pollinate as well. Um, and then the other thing they do is corn rootworm beetles lay their eggs in corn fields. And uh, so I've got just a quick run through of the math here. If you have one beetle per plant in a field that's planted 24,000 population, you end up with roughly 12,000 female beetles. Each one of those female beetles can lay up to a thousand eggs a year. And so at that one beetle per plant population, you could end up with up to 12 million eggs in that field for next year. So where that's a problem is when you go in there next year and you plant 24,000 plants again, you now have um, somewhere around 500 uh, potential eggs per plant. And so uh, kind of managing that corn rootworm cycle year round is important. We can go in shortly after tassel or at tassel on that corn, spray an inse a foliar insecticide, reduce that beetle population out there, reduce the amount of eggs that get laid, reduce the amount of pressure we're gonna have the next year. Um, or the other option is uh, you do nothing, you have problems with rootworm in your field next year, or you rotate to another crop, and then you don't have to worry about your corn rootworm beetles. So there's a few different ways to uh, make that transition and make it a better experience next year. All of it just takes planning. That's all for today. 
I'm Matt Long, helping you farm differently, providing information you can't get anywhere else.